my dear students and researchers and learners so today i am going to discuss about the mppt coding mainly coding part so there one dc to dc converter is required so that part i am not discussing so only this is for the code okay so here i am uh, writing the code based on p and o al algorithm so perturb perturbation and observation so you give some perturbation check the status and accordingly you uh, change the voltage means the duty cycle for dc to dc converter to change the voltage basically nothing but to change the duty cycle <clears throat> so that you match the impedance always always you try to match the impedance so that the maximum power could be transferred okay so it is very simple every clock cycle you check whether the power is increasing or not so if power is increasing then you check whether voltage also increasing if power is increasing and voltage also increasing then you increase the duty cycle means it have more capability but if power is increasing but the voltage is decreasing then it's not able to load is more so you decrease the duty cycle similarly if power is decreasing and voltage also decreasing then you increase the duty cycle but if power is decreasing but the voltage is increasing then you decrease the duty cycle this is the four conditions we are going to implement so from the solar cell when the basically the for the dc to dc converter the uh, the input the input of the dc to dc converter will be the solar cell or pv array so there you put a sensor put a voltage sensor and current sensor and if you multiply this voltage and current this will give power then every clock cycle you do this okay you check this and alter the duty cycle that is the mppt p and o algorithm so i am directly going to the code line by line i will explain it's not so difficult so who already because most of the people they are familiar with arduino id so i am writing this here the processor the, the the microcontroller used here as uh, at mega 328p it is sufficient enough to do this so let us go to the code okay so as you know this is the header file i have included and here i have here i have uh define the two constant one is average so average means this average number means we are going to this is a running average we will be taking so in this case we will be taking 10 samples of the voltage and current value and we are averaging it and here the timer is configured for 10 bit resolution so that's why the maximum value of the pwm duty cycle is 1023 that means it is 100% okay then these are the load voltage load ampere means load voltage and load current and old load voltage and old load ampere that is the value of the previous cycle then load watt and old load watt load watt is the present power and old load watt is the uh, previous power then the then i am defining the initial duty cycle this is to be adjusted based on based on the uh, irradiation from where you will start so that 
you have to define now i am coming to the main function first i am going to here i have defined one user defined function called pin configuration so let us see the pin configuration in the pin configuration i am using here timer 1 channel a so the pwm will be given by pwm will be generated pw pwm will be generated from ocr 1a so ocr 1a means you see this is the ocr 1a that is pb1 so that pb1 should be defined as output so i have here defined both the both the channel so this first pb1 is the ocr1 a and uh, ocr1 b will be pb2 so both i defined as output so for that only i use this pin configuration okay then i am going to timer initialization so this i am not elaborating here because already from my channel or i'll give the link how to how to set a timer in phase correct mode for a phase correct configuration in pwm mode so there that is so you see timer initialization that somewhere i have defined you see here i have defined defined it what are the things already i will in the video description it will be there you can see how the pwm is generated using a timer in phase correct mode then you will understand why these registers are used and what are the bits are used okay then i will be reading the current and voltage <coughs> so it will be done through the adc so that's why i have used adc initialization so that also i have written somewhere so this is the adc initialization there also i have used the i will i will give the link that how to initialize the adc okay and after that this i have used this function is used for read the adc so this adc read and channel number so here you, you we are using two two channel 0 and 1 so remaining things are not required actually up to this sorry from here to here it is not required because we are ready reading the voltage and current so this two are sufficient okay so this function also i will i will give the link that how to configure the adc there it will be clear okay now with that because i told i am going to average it so this function is to average this function basically is to average you take because it's a, it's a running average so it is always better to take the running average so it will give some steady value okay so this function is basically for that only okay now what i am doing this old load voltage means this will this is outside of the while one loop so basically this part we will execute once so i am reading the so here the voltage should be voltage sensor should be connected to a0 and the current sensor should be connected to a1 so you read the uh voltage and current and you multiply both the things and you will get the previous power 
now in while one loop because this is this will be executed every clock cycle i have used a function called read data so let us see what is that read data i have used one function called read data so this is the read data so read data as i told it is the present value so that i am reading it in the loop in the while one loop so i am reading the value okay so whatever outside of the loop that is the previous value of voltage current and power and what is inside while one loop that is the present value of voltage current and power okay then i have written one more function called check status every time it will check the status so let us see what is that check status so this is the check status so in the check status what i am doing because there are three conditions it will come either the present power should be higher than the previous power or the present power will be less than the previous power or present power will be equal to the previous power so this is the three condition and for the three condition i am using one more function called pwm underscore set now i have defined it here okay is a switch case statement so you remember so the first one is what if the power is increasing second case if power is decreasing and the third case is power is unchanged so if the power is increasing then what do i have to check whether my voltage is increasing or not so if the case one is power increasing and under this if voltage is also increasing then you increase the duty cycle so that's why you see duty cycle plus plus and if the power is increasing and voltage is decreasing then you have to reduce the duty cycle and break and case 2 was what case 2 was when the power is reducing so if power is reducing and the voltage is increasing then you have to decrease the duty cycle and if power is decreasing and voltage also decreasing then you have to increase the duty cycle and come out from that and case 3 nothing to do so just keep the duty cycle as earlier and come out so over so this pwm set function is over okay now in the loop one more function is there value update because sometime what happen keep on going going it may go beyond the maximum resolution or when the duty cycle is decreasing it will go below the zero or the threshold value okay threshold value below it may not go because you already duty cycle start from 13 so anyway it is always better to write that so in value update what i am writing if the duty cycle is going beyond the resolution of the timer then you restrict it to 1023 because it is set for 10 bit resolution and if the duty cycle going below 0 then restrict it to 0 and you show up the value the old what is the what is equal to the present what so it will go it will keep on repeat in every cycle so this is all about the code okay <clears throat> i'll slowly once again move it so this is up to 28th line
okay then i'll start from 29th line to 51 line 52 <clears throat> then i will go to go from 52 to 74 then i will go from 75 to 82 you can see then I will go from here to say 106 then I will go for check status this is the check status function you can pause the video and write the code then this is the pwm set function it is end here in 151 line then after that remaining is the value update okay let us compile the code so no error done compiling it is checked also i have checked the same thing in my lab it is perfectly working so you can also check so here only the things you may not understand the timer in the timer what are the configuration and edc how it has done so for that in my channel there will be video for uh, uh, pwm fixed duty pwm generation and edc configuration if you see that you can understand it okay so finally the duty cycle where it is getting updated is the in the inter in the interrupt service routine of the timer in the interrupt this is the interrupt service routine of the timer here only the duty cycle is getting updated after doing all the calculation it is getting updated here okay so this was all about the code so hope you will be benefited let you and let you understand the code run it and tell me the result i'll be happy if some someone get benefited and really get the output after running this code thank you so much thanks for your patience